Hello and welcome to another edition of For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guests today are the fine folks from the Ledgelight Health District. Uh, it's flu season, basically, and we're going to talk about that and a lot more. First up on the show, Chris Magnuson, Supervisor for the Communicable Disease and Prevention for Ledgelight Health District. First time on the show, on the TV show, because you've been on the radio show. Yes. So thank you for joining me today on TV. Thank you for the invite. Uh, for, to start, let's tell people who are, are unfamiliar with Ledgelight Health District what it is. Well, we are the local health department for uh, the areas along the shoreline like Ledger, mm -hmm. uh, Waterford, New London, Groton, East Lyme. And when it comes to mass dispensing in the event of a public health emergency, we would cover the towns that are were health our health department as well as Lyme, Old Lyme, Stonington, and North Stonington. So throughout Connecticut, there are health districts that cover many towns. Then some towns have their own health department. And then some towns, like my town, Old Lyme, has a part-time health department. So some towns uh, will have their own, like you said, but others, it's like a multi-town kind right. of a Right. You know, in this region. day and age, it's just, you know, combining resources, and it just makes for more resources for those towns. So we're a large health district. For we, comparatively, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. We have over 20 employees that do everything from checking um, uh, restaurants and hair salons and following through on you know regulations to health educators epidemiologists and myself that do communicable disease we do preparedness so it's it's a large group now since you cover so many towns I would imagine part of that is because the bigger cities with so much uh, larger populations probably almost need to have their own they have their own yeah, yeah. Hartford right. New Haven Bridgeport Merritt and places like that have their own. More, more densely populated yes. in the cities. Yes. Now, how was it decided way back when that something like this was needed? I think it really had to do is uh, resources started to dwindle, finances, and it's just really, we're seeing this happen more and more. Um, and there's a real push to yeah. regionalize sort of the different uh, services that are out there. Yeah, resources need to be, you know, There's a tougher. finite amount of money, and in public health, unfortunately, there's not a lot. What's your, you know, this is kind of an off, it's sort of off topic, but not really. You're, you know, from your point of view for what you do for a living, the state of affairs as far as health care and just how people are dealing with it and, and just the way things are going now. Well, I think due to the economy for the number of years, I, what I see and hear from people is they can't afford health care. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I know that a lot of health departments, including ours, are doing is assisting people to sign up for the Affordable Care Act so that they can get insurance. That's probably one of the most common phone calls that I get, especially with the flu season. I'm getting phone calls saying, I don't have money, I don't have insurance, how can I get a flu shot? And I'm going to assume that a lot of people are unaware that, uh, that there are so many resources that are available out there, or information that they're not aware of that they can possibly take advantage of. Oh, there's of. lots of things. I had no idea what was available, in, you know, and I'm a nurse. I yeah. didn't know <laughs> until I came into public health all that is available. So people really need to go to their town's website and uh, find out if they don't even know who their health department is to find out who they are and they might be surprised what's available. So call you, right? You, you guys can for answer. Our, yes, for yeah. the towns that we cover, by all means. For someone who's calling from another part of the state, if they do happen to call you, can you steer them in the right sure, direction? Sure, be happy to. Right. Yeah. But they can actually go to the Connecticut Department of Public Health website, and there's actually in the very uh, first page, it'll say, find your local health department. So you can actually look up your town and have all the information on how to contact somebody. Uh, and this would be a good time, not only because, you know, health care is changing, as we mm -hmm. know, um, but as we tape this, we're, I guess, are we technically coming into the flu season now? Or? Oh, yes. It's, oh, yeah. It started. It's sporadic. Well, let's talk about that. Let's sure. talk about the flu. What, you know, these, so these are obvious questions, but what is the flu? Well, it's, it's a virus. And uh, it's been around forever and ever. And uh, every year it evolves a little bit. Uh, viruses tend to do that. And so every year they sort of determine what kind of vaccine, sort of what's been based on previous years. And also they look at what's happening in the Southern Hemisphere because they're ahead of us with their winter. And so their hope is that with the um, sort of the mixture that they have for the vaccine that it'll take care of the circulating flu viruses. So far from what we've seen, especially in the Southern Hemisphere, the flu vaccine is covering the circulating viruses. It's almost like a guessing game a little bit, isn't it? It because is. Because you never, you're not sure, <coughs> do I, am I coming down with something now? No, I'm kidding. 
you, you're never sure exactly about, I mean, you can study the strain, but you're, you know, if, especially if you want to try to keep ahead of it, you're, you know, you're, it's because it, it's altered a little bit every year, right? A little bit. Um, for the most part, it's right on target. Okay. May, you know, there's some that may be off, but H1N1 is now part of it because that was the pandemic a few years back. We do see that circulating. Um, is it under control? Or is there any such thing as it really being, you know? We never know. Yeah. Never know. But now, but different, depending on the year, the, the strain could be more virile. It could just be it could. tougher, right? Yeah, we had a tough year last year. Yeah. There was a lot of flu. Um, so, f so far, it's sporadic around the country. But we, we tend not to see the flu in Connecticut until later in the season. And in this area on the shore, we tend to see a lot of flu like after Christmas. Right. The new year. Welcome. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Here's the flu. Yeah. Um, okay. This morning on my radio show, <laughs> you were kind enough to come in um, and give me a flu shot. We talked just like we're talking now, just to kind of get the word out a little bit. And, and we'll talk about some of the misconceptions. But you gave me a flu shot. I had to tackle you, too. Uh, we'll Gosh. put the pictures up so you can see <laughs> the, the frown on my face. Uh, but this is the second year in a row that I've had you come in and, and give a flu shot. And, you know, I kid around about the needles, but it really wasn't that bad. Oh. Uh, it really was. And you, didn't, and you didn't get the flu last year, well, did you? I did not. I, okay. I don't believe I did uh, that I did get the flu. And so I'm glad I got it. Yeah, we had a lot of flu last year. So see? It was worth it. Um, so obviously you recommend that, that everybody get a flu shot, but there are some people that are afraid, concerned, and there are people who believe that it actually, you know, causes more harm than good. No, oh, I, wish, I wish people would be very careful where they read their information from. Alleviate, what are some, clear up what, what <laughs> is not real and what is real. People, first of all, say the flu makes you get the flu, makes you no. sicker, no? No. It is, uh, for the most part, with the injections, it is, um, the, it's a dead virus, so right. to speak, that you're getting injected. With the uh, live one, which is the flu mist, which is ah. this little thing we'll that you, just, that. you yeah. just squirt up the nose, that's what we call live attenuated, but usually all that people will get is maybe a little bit of a, a runny nose, a little bit of congestion. You're not going to get the flu from it. Is that the exact same flu vaccination that you would get with the with the needle yeah, version? Just, okay. yeah, yeah. You're just injecting it a different way yes, basically. But they're only certain people, two to uh, 49 years of age, healthy, no asthma, and not pregnant, um, no chronic illness. They can't get it. So this is a great, and this is great for kids. Yeah, because nobody um, likes needles, especially kids or big kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't tested it on older folks, okay, and that's so. why it's only to 49 49 years of age at, at this point. A, 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 an older person, we're going to get into seniors, but an older person's immune system is a little weaker? Or? Well, that's a good question because now available is a uh, what's called uh, influenza HD or high dose. High dose. And so, <laughs> so that is um, higher dose to help them to boost their immune system. Okay. But even if they don't get that, if maybe their physician doesn't have it, if they get the regular influenza shot, still fine. Let's talk about, so that's the nasal version. What so else this is have? two to 49 uh, years of age. Um, there's a new one out. I don't have it. I don't know many people that do. And again, I don't know because it may do with a cost, but this is for somebody, you would like this. Can you even see that needle? I can barely, it's barely, it's, barely sticking well, it's, out. It's an intradermal. And so if this is somebody who really doesn't like injections, maybe they can't get the flu mist. And so all you do is inject just like you would a regular oh, You were going to give me a second shot? Yeah, wow. it's empty. What happens if you get two? Is, does anything bad no, happen? No, no, okay. And it happens sometimes. We've actually... Oh, is that right? We've had people that go through and then realize, oops, I had one I earlier. keep getting the feeling that you want to give me another flu shot. No, even though, okay. no, this just has saline water okay. in it. But see how tiny that the is? You can barely, how come everybody doesn't use that? Is it, uh, is well, it better to use the it's more new. conventional? It's, it's, it really doesn't matter. Okay. It's new. They use less antigen in it, which is really good. If you ever had a pandemic, mm -hmm. you have more to work with. Um, it's new, so it costs a little bit more. Not everybody has it. Some people complain that their arm hurts afterwards, but everybody. Could that be used for things like uh, diabetics if they're, you know, using needles more often? Something in that vein, do you think? or? They could. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it yeah. all depends. I don't, to be honest with you, I haven't used it, right. and this is really for um, but it's eight, new, right? 18 years. 18 years and up is my understanding okay. for this. And then, of course, we have the traditional. Um, is that what was used on me this morning? Yes. Ugh, and it looks it, much scarier. But now. you know, the needles are so, it, so thin and so you sharp. You tell that to my arm. Yeah. yeah, that's. And then there's one called flu block. 
that is not made with egg. So that would be uh, well, if you're our allergic, protein. Okay. Yep. Um, so that would be for somebody who has those egg allergies. And, and it's important to know if you have that or not because you need to have the proper flu shot just to make your life a little yeah. easier, right? But, you know, a lot of folks, I have egg allergies, but I take a regular flu vaccine. So a lot of folks, you know, need to check with their physician. Right. If they really are truly allergic to it, then they might want to look at the flu block. Absolutely. And that's brand new. Right. Let's talk about some other misconceptions about the flu or f reasons why people would not want to get a flu shot and you're trying to convince them to get one. What else? Well, if you've ever had the flu, yeah. <laughs> you'll be the first in line next year to get the flu vaccine. <laughs> I can guarantee that'll happen. That's a good point, um, yeah. You know, the, the thing is, is the thing is, way. people don't realize that healthy people can die from the flu. And unfortunately, we've seen over the years healthy kids that have died from the flu. And the thought is that maybe because it stimulates their immune system, they have a little bit of a hyperimmune system because they're young, and the flu kind of takes over quickly. Um, so we tend to think that, you know, gee, the elderly and the very young, they're the ones really at risk. But we need to realize that everybody is at risk, including healthy kids. Um, and there have been some really, you know, sad stories posted on the website with young kids. There was a young man that had played a basketball game, collapsed, and it turned out he had the flu, and within, oh within 24 hours he died. You wouldn't wish that on anybody. If, so you're, if you're running you around that, on the court, then you're really taxing your body. And right? that was the feeling, that it just kind of sent it into high gear. So the flu, flu can affect anybody. So it may be that you miss work. When I had the flu, I was out of work for a week. I couldn't even get my head off the pillow. Oh, I felt like goodness. I'd been hit by a Mack truck. And now with H1N1, we actually see stomach issues, people with some nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. We tend not to think of that as influenza, but with H1N1, that was some of the things that we saw. Yeah, so, you just call it a stomach virus, right? So, you know, you don't want to miss work. You don't want to miss school. You don't want to be flat out in bed. You don't want to make others sick, and right. that's the other thing. Right, that's the thing. You don't want to miss work. You don't want to miss school, but they will tell you at work and school, stay away from us, stay please, home. Please, please. And you don't want to be giving it to anybody, especially the very young, especially babies. You know, under six months of age, they can't be vaccinated. So anybody with a baby, we call it cocooning, really should get, the whole family should be getting the vaccination against the flu. And when you're out, you know, doing things like, let's say you go to the gym, you're touching everything, everybody else is touching everything. Those are easy ways to, oh, yes. to, uh, to, uh, to send it on off to 30 other people. Absolutely. And Cora's going to talk about prevention because that goes hand in hand with getting the flu shot. You were talking about kids. Let's go the other way and talk more about seniors because they might be concerned that maybe their immune system can't handle it. Maybe they'll get more sick. Maybe they're weak. Is that a misconception too? No. You know, as we age, our immune system is not as strong. So they are, you know, more susceptible to picking up illnesses and they have every right to be concerned. As we age, we tend to have um, you know, issues going on, maybe diabetes, heart disease and stuff. So definitely want to get a flu shot. But senior citizens tend to be the ones that are first in line for the uh, shots. Yeah, they're they're, there, yeah. they, they've learned. How come uh, in the past, I don't know if that's the case this year, but sometimes you hear about shortages of flu vaccines. Why does that happen? Well, for, there are different reasons to do with the manufacturer. I know this year what we're hearing, and I'm not quite sure why, is that some folks actually had to cancel flu clinics because they couldn't get the flu vaccine in time. And I've heard different things that it had to do with um, lot numbers, labeling. I really don't know the answer, and I've tried to research it, and nobody's been able to tell me. But we don't have a flu sh vaccine shortage. Okay, there's not. It's, so just, that's a it's just not being sent in a timely fashion. But like I say, we haven't hit the flu season, so don't give up. Right. Um, people but, can go to their pharmacy. A lot of pharmacists have it. A lot of physicians have it. I think where we're running into issues is some of the visiting nurse associations that like to do clinics early haven't gotten it in, in a timely fashion, but they will be getting it. Uh, before we run out of time for your segment, we actually are over. Did you want to mention some, uh, you know, like you're making the rounds or some events coming up? In, in yeah. Um, we are partnering with Child and Family Agency of Southeastern Connecticut. Their mission is to take care of children and they actually are providing flu vaccine to children under the age of 18 with no um, out-of-pocket expense. We will be doing October 29th at Pawkatuck Middle School, 4 to 7 p.m. Um, please bring your kids. Also November 5th at New London at the uh, Benny Dover Jackson School, and then on November 12th at the Claude Chester School in Groton from 4 to 7 p.m. So bring your kids. 
Uh, this is a great thing that Child and Family is doing. LegeLite is assisting them with our Medical Reserve Corps and some of our staff. And uh, any child under the age of 18, like I say, there'll be no out-of-pocket expense. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching it on the TV after these uh, dates have gone by, uh, go to the website because there's a constant listing of events and locations that you'll be at. What's the website? Um, the, well, you can go to ours, www.llhd.org, and we've listed these, okay. as well as you can go to www.cfapress.org -E for Child and Family Agency, but also, too, for the rest of your listeners around the state, go to your local health department, go to your pharmacy, if you can't go to your physician. Um, there's lots of flu clinics. Walmart, everyone tends to have flu clinics. Chris, the supervisor for the for uh, communicable disease and prevention <laughs> for LegeLite Health District, who gave me my shot on the radio this morning, and she's the best administrator of a needle ever. So. Oh, thank you for saying that on air, because that's not what you said. <laughs> oh. We're going to take a break and come back. We've got a lot more to get to. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay with us. Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. We are talking, one of the big things on this show is the flu and prevention and getting your flu shot. We're joined now by uh, Cora Eckwardzel. Did I say it right? You did. Close enough. Registered nurse. And uh, so we, we got another nurse on. It's important, you know, when you're talking about this subject. There's so much we have to get to in a short time. So thank you for being on the show. Let, great to be here. Let's get, um, let's get, also, aside from being a registered nurse, you are uh, at University of Hartford right yes. now, master's degree. What's yes, going on there? Yes, master's of science in nursing and public health. And so I am uh, down here at the Ledge Light Health District working with Chris Magnuson and, and the team, uh, learning a lot about emergency preparedness and um, prevention of communicable disease. And part of that is um, flu shots, yeah. flu shot clinic. And I, I was witness to you bravely and <laughs> right. valiantly shouldering your flu shot, I cry so like to speak. I a baby, you know. <laughs> and this is the, you know, in all honesty, the flu shot is the easy needle to take. You know, we, I, you know those who are giving blood, because that has to go right into the vein. Yes. So that's the, that's the tough one, but we still recommend and it. That. And it is the fear that, that everyone's afraid of the needle, and right. that's it. But once uh, you're in there, they always say, you already gave it? Yeah, or, that's you exactly know, right. It's over already? Right, so, yeah. It's the fear. And, More that, than and the that's needle. fine. So go get one. But let's talk about prevention. We started a little bit on the first segment, but um, there, let's talk about prevention. One thing. Uh, let's get right to nine five two one zero. There's a reason for those particular numbers. Let's talk there about it. There is. So do you want to try try to take a guess? I know it sounds like a zip code, but it's not. Right. So it's a nine nine zero two one zero or something, right? It's uh, it's something that we're talking about in public health, and um, nine is uh, the hours of sleep. So what nine we should hours. all be getting uh, to stay healthy is we're going to try to attempt to get nine hours of sleep. Oh, my goodness. I don't even come close, unfortunately, because of my schedule. You know, you were on the morning show with me on the radio, so, you know, I'm up at 3.30, and it's tough to go to bed early enough to try to get nine hours of sleep because the rest of civilization is <laughs> up, I guess. So. Well, these are just goals to yeah. keep in mind. Of course, with our, di our different working schedules, and some of us, it just would never be possible to get nine hours of sleep, but that's something we want to hold out as a goal, especially for children. Uh, all right, so there's nine, five. Five, could you guess what five might be? What would we want to do five times a day? Wash our hands. <laughs> More, probably, no, probably well, more that's more. something we'll talk about later, uh, washing our hands, but... Um, I'm trying to s uh, sneak a reading your, it has your cheat sheets. It has something to do with what we, we'd be eating. Oh, five fruits and vegetables? Yes, okay. five sweets. Servings? Could you, could you eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day? Listen, I, at the, at the, <laughs> I separate the chicken from the broccoli at the buffet. It now doesn't you want count. me to eat me five? It doesn't count. Uh, orange soda doesn't count. So. Right. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Or apple, well, apple juice, that's pretty good. So five servings of fruits and vegetables. Five fruits and vegetables a day. Yep. And as I said, that's to hold up as a goal for all of us. We want to get at least five. That's, that helps the immune system, right? Yes. All right, two. Two. What would you want to get to? What would you want to limit yourself to two of a day? Um, Not cigarettes. Uh, yeah, right. I'm gonna have to cheat here and read because you're uh, two. Uh, uh, what is that? Screen, screen. Screen time. Screen time. What does that mean? Well, certainly for children, you don't want them to come home from school and sit and look at video games for hours and okay, hours. Okay, I got you. So, so maximum. That's what it is. So that's a maximum. That's a number. maximum. And for adults or children, it would also be television. Right. So TV, those of the, us, the laptop, right, the iPad. Right. So those of us who come home from work and um, turn on the TV and leave it on all night. We want to limit to two hours a day. 
Now, the one, I, I think it's pretty easy without, <laughs> without uh, because we, we want at least a, an hour of some kind of physical activity, some right. kind of exercise right. a day, right? Does it mean you have to join the gym? Right. It could it be means, taking a walk, right? right? Of course. During your lunch break, get up from your computer, get up from your desk, get out, take a walk. Do yourself a favor, get some fresh air. These are all components of a healthy lifestyle. And zero, I don't know. What should we not do ever? Zero times a well, day. Well, zero, uh, just it's, it's the sweets and the high-fat oh, foods. Yeah. So that's what we want to limit. Right, yeah, and that's, again, part of the diet. So if you can kind of live by those numbers, you're going to be a much yep. healthier person. And, and Make 95210. Make those your numbers. Let's stay with prevention a little bit and talk okay. about things like, um, you know, washing of the hands. How and important is that? I'm washing like the hands is very important, and that's our, primary, that's our primary way of preventing something like the flu. So during the cold and flu season, which is coming up now, we, we want to be extra careful that we wash our hands. Hand washing with soap and water. If there's nothing available, uh, here's some san hand sanitizer. It should be uh, at least 60% alcohol. Put it on and just rub your hands. So and these are available in many public places and certainly in workplaces. Some people go overboard with this, do they? I mean, can, can you get too much into it? Can it actually be bad for you if you're, you're uh, using well, it? Well, when you're rubbing, it's not really absorbed into the system. So if you're worried about the alcohol, that, that shouldn't be a concern. Okay, so it won't dry it out too much there. Yep. Um, okay. Um, so there's that. Uh, there's so much I want to get to. How okay. about like, um, you know, like sneezing? Yes, you know, you want let's to talk about that. Let's talk about sneezing. Uh, in the old days, people used to sneeze into their hands and oh, then wash their the hands. It's the worst thing to do, it, right? It's the absolute worst, to do, worst thing to do. So if you need to sneeze and you do have a Kleenex, you can use a Kleenex, throw the Kleenex out, and then wash your hands or use some hand sanitizer. Better yet, uh, you would want to sneeze uh, into your elbow or into your collar, like that. And that's a, a very good way um, of preventing... How do you avoid, and I know this because I've switched to the pound, but everybody in the world, especially in the business world, and not so much, not even business, shake hands. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest transmitters, isn't it? Well, shaking you could, hands? You could always uh, politely decline to shake hands or say, I'm not uh, feeling I'm well. You want to stay three feet away from someone who is, if you are ill or if someone else is ill, you want to stay uh, three feet away. And you always want to remember to keep your, uh, your phone, um, Ugh, you know, the yeah. handle of your phone, um, your keyboard. There are, san uh, you know, products that you can use to sanitize those because that can um, also be used for uh, as transmission of germs. I've, I've read the cell phone is one of the germiest things that exists. And because people, that's fingers uh, yep. and talking and texting. And Let's get to uh, this chart. All right, so here we have this poster. Uh, this is from the Ledge Light Health District. So let's talk about that. It starts with washing your hands with soap and water. And uh, as I mentioned, you want to use the 60% alcohol base. Keep your hands away from your eyes and mouth because uh, the germs can enter your body that way and make you sick. Please don't smoke. You shouldn't be smoking anyway. Right. But please, especially, don't smoke. When if you get you're sick, Ill. that only makes it worse. Anyway, you feel worse, it makes it worse, right? Uh, you want to get a flu shot every year, and Chris talked about the importance of getting a flu shot. Uh, if you are ill, please stay home. Uh, you don't want to have people. Uh, you don't want the kids in school, and you don't want people uh, at work that are sick. Right. Someone does come into work, stay away. Nobody from Nobody wants you there at work anyway when you're miserable and sick. And, uh, you know, seek health care if you need it. Otherwise, you want to make sure you're hydrated. You can take an over-the-counter um, Tylenol or Advil, a product like that, um, to keep your flu, uh, your temperature down. Is there any misconceptions about, like, things that people do, take vitamin C and gobs of it, or, th you know, home remedies that people think work that may not necessarily help fight against Well, it the depends flu? what it is. Certainly vitamin C can be helpful, and home remedies can be helpful. It's, of Especially if you were raised with something, you know, that your grandmother gave you, Vicks and these common things right. um, can help keep the nasal passages open. So uh, you want to use all your good home remedies. Chicken soup has actually been proven to work. Is to that right, really? Open the nasal yeah. passages. It's, it's so. perfect for when you're yep. sick. A lot of people uh, mistake uh, the common cold for the flu or vice yes. versa, right? Uh, well, the flu is going to hit you like a train. And uh, so there's no question. Yeah, there's no, you're not going to be able to, you'll be able to tell the difference. You will be right? off your feet and yeah. you, you might be sick for three days, even longer. Uh, it might take you a couple of days to re recuperate. But it, what's really important is that you do not go back to work. If you haven't, you have, you shouldn't have a temperature for 24 hours before you go out, go back to work. You want to, you don't want to be contagious. To other you don't want to get, be too active. You want to, your body needs to rest. You're, Absolutely. If you try to go back too early or try to, Get, I know people are nuts about the gym sometimes and they try to go back too early. You only can, it, it could cause a relapse and you end up getting knocked out for another week or so. You're or right. Something. Rest and recuperation are, tr are crucial. So, 
and, and scream at the person that gave you the flu in the first place if you could track who they are, track them down, right? Cora, from, uh, she's, uh, um, she's working right now with the, uh, the Ledgelite Health District, a registered nurse yourself, also going to school. Uh, we ran out of time. Thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Sean. Tell Great everyone to, meet to get you. their flu shots, right? Get your flu shots. Get All your right. flu shots. Thank you for joining us for another edition of For the Record. You can see this show and many others on our YouTube site. Until next time, take care.